summarize you. Would turn your hymn books again. Yeah, I do it again. Turn your Bibles to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. We want to try to talk a little bit concerning the law, grace, and I'm sure that all of you are familiar with it, but uh, uh, we need to be reminded of it because uh, lest anything slip, you know, we, we need Amen. to be reminded. And so I'm thankful this morning that I have the opportunity to uh, stand before the Sunday school class and to uh, try to uh, encourage and y'all pray for me that I might be in the will of the Lord, that I might uh, not say anything that would be displeasing to Him and that uh, what I say might be an, an encouragement to all and we might uh, take these things and uh, uh, think upon them during the week to come and we might be encouraged. So this morning in chapter 1, of, of chapter 10, verse 1 of the book of Hebrews, uh, the writer, a lot of people think, seem to think that it's all, but I'll, I'll say the writer, for the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image, the things can never with these those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comer unto perf perfect. perfect. Now, the writer here is saying he's talking about the law as a shadow. And I've often referred to this shadow a lot of times and I don't know maybe some of you have uh, heard of a foot log that goes across a creek. Well, we used to, that's the way we got across the creeks to keep from getting wet. And of a night time we'd go fishing and things like this and the moon maybe would be shining and it would cast its light on this log. But also it would make a shadow now, we didn't try to go down there and walk across that creek with that shadow. Right. But we knew where we were going, we knew what we were doing, and I wanted to use that example to explain this right here because he's saying here that the law having a shadow of good things. Now, the law, the law pointed to Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord did not have grace. The law did not, in, in the sense that Jesus did, the law did not have that ability to save. Amen. But now, it had a, it had a strength to roll back from year to year and for uh, keep people from dying in their sins. And when they died, these laws, they had, they had sacrificed animals to the to the and the priest would make the blood atonement each year and the the sin would be rolled back it wouldn't be forgiven but it would be rolled back now it's sort of like used to the old sharecropper when he would decide that he wanted to make a a, a crop for a whole year and he didn't have a, a penny in his pocket he would go to a merchant and he would ask them can I get credit here for a year until I raise a crop of tobacco and I sell it? And when my crop comes in, I'll pay you. Well, it's the same situation here with the law. The law, the law was, was a type of thing where that people would, would honor and obey and do and it, at the end of the year, they would come to the priest and the priest would make a blood offering for that whole congregation, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't pay the debt. The only thing that it would do was roll back all those sins because the law was not perfect. Right. And it could not save, but the law was what they used for years and years and hundreds of years. And so it pointed to a savior Jesus Christ. Right. They pointed right. to it, but they had not seen it visually with their eyes. And so as the 
Years went on, and as it went on, they continued doing this, and they continued doing this until the law was no more, or and the law was not what it should be, and so the Lord God of heaven sent his son Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, here we are, and he says he's talking about this law, and he said the shadow of good, the law having a shadow of good things. Now, the shadow of good things was the, the preaching or the teaching that Jesus Christ would come as our Savior, and that the law would that they would it would take it would use that blood and it had to be in the blood atonement for their sins to keep them from dying and going to hell now you say well what happened what happened well they went unto abraham's bosom they did not those that kept the law and tried to do the law they went to abraham's bosom now you look over in luke 20 something i believe it is and you see the story about the rich man and Lazarus. Right. And the rich man died, and in hell he lifted his eyes because he hadn't kept the law. But Lazarus kept the law, and so he went into Abraham's bosom, and there where Abraham was, where Jacob and all of them, because the rich man saw who was over there because he called out to Father Abraham and said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he might dip the tip of his tongue in some water and cool my parching or my tongue because I'm in misery. So we know then that there is a there was a place, there was a place for those that kept the law right. to go until the Messiah came and paid the, the debt that they owed because they were still in debt. And so here we see Again here, you notice here, uh, and, and for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the thing can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comer thereof perfect. And it's the same way this morning. Listen, there is people, there is so many thousands and thousands and thousands of people that think that they can do works. Right. They can, they can justify their sins by putting money in the tithe box or by uh, going down here and helping uh, some poor soul that needs help or, or they can uh, just live the best they can. Listen, that will work. Right. It just will not work. And now it was it would come closer to working back in their times because they were under the law. But listen, now we don't have to do none of that. We have this, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, that came to the cross of Calvary and he died for our sins, made that atonement, and he is sitting on the right hand of the Father after he made the atonement. And he's making intercessions for you and for me. And listen, when, when, when we sin and we come to the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and ask for forgiveness of those sins, he forgives those sins. Amen. And he, when he's there with God, and God is in here or there together, he points out to God, this is my blood that is covering these sins. And God forgives that sin. Amen. And so you have a better, a better than the law. So here is what he's talking about now. For in verse two, for then would they not have ceased to offer, talking about the law, to be offered, because that the worshiper once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. Now I want you to see something this morning. What he's saying. With, with us this morning, with us this morning that have, that have been saved and truly saved, and I know this morning that we have people that have been uh, misled and right. they are, they're not saved in, 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 like in, in serious condition. But listen, God knows whose His is. And Amen. listen, He is going to save every one of His that He's that he has written down in right. the Lamb's book of life, they will be saved. Amen. And this morning, 
we, uh, we should realize this morning that if the Lord Jesus Christ has saved us by the shedding of his blood, that, listen, we cannot fall from that sin, we, uh, from, that, from that grace, because, listen, that blood is still in front of God, and that blood just keeps him from seeing our sins. And when we sin and we ask God, uh, Jesus to forgive us of our sins, he, he, he presents it to the Father. Amen. And the sin is forgiven. And the thing of it is, so many people think, well, I have got out here and I have done this sin. I have committed this sin and I've done this sin. And they go to their so-called pastor and he says, well, you need to be saved again. Right. Well, listen, that don't work. Amen. People, and you're, the Bible says that, this, that you're, you're making a mockery of God by saying that His blood that He shed on the cross of Calvary could be uh, spoiled or could lose its effect. Because, listen, it's perfect. Right. His blood is perfect. And once that blood is applied to your soul, to your spirit, you may get in a condition like David did and like others, the prophets, and, and me and you. You may get in a shape where that you think, well, uh, uh, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just giving up. I can't do it. Listen, don't get in that shape because that's what the devil wants you to do. If he can get you to deny the blood of Christ, right. even though you won't lose your soul, but the thing of this you're showing a disgrace and you're lowering the, the name of Jesus Christ. Right. When you, when you say, yeah, I was saved once. And I've had so many people, I was saved once, but I, I, got, fell, I fell by the wayside. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying, listen, people, that's a very, that's a very situation where that, that you're, you're denying your Savior, Jesus Christ. Right. And it's it's so it's so it's so awful. And listen, one of these days, the Lord will bless and and help you back to where that you were. But listen, don't give up on God because these troublesome times that we have, and we go through them, and we think, Lord, I'll never I'll never get through this. But listen, when you get through it. You look back and you'll say how great God is. Amen. How great Jesus is because He brought me through those things. And listen, I had no I had no way to do it. And listen, I know this morning that there's there's someone in this church that's had those experiences because you're looking at him. Right. And listen, I've had those times when it seemed like that everything, everything was just going wrong. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't study my Bible. I couldn't read. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything that was encouraging to me. And listen, I just keep on. I just, I just have to keep on praying, people. Right. And, and the old devil said, "Well, you've lost your salvation." Well, I know he's lying to me, and I know right. that's of him because God's word is true, and God's word says that my salvation is secure, <coughs> and it's there until I reach where I'm going into heaven and I'll be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is this is something here. Notice I, I wanted to tell you this, but he says here in the verse verse two, he says, because that the worshiper once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. Now that was he's talking about the law. And but the law didn't do that because he had to come back every year and have the priest to make an atonement for him or, or, or the, for the whole, the whole church or whatever, that the, the priest would go in and apply the blood to the altar, to the offering, and make an atonement for the sins of that man. And, and, and it was just like him being resaved or redone again. And the sin was be rolled back. But now, with grace, that don't work. It don't work that way. Amen. And we do not have to come back to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Father, forgive me and save my soul again. Because it's, it's, it's a disgrace 
to the Father. It's a, it's a, it's a slam in the face of Jesus. It, it's, it's not so. And it's what the devil would have you to, to want to think. And listen, there's thousands of preachers right out here in this world that will teach that you can lose your salvation and you have to be saved again and you have to be saved again and you have to be saved again. And people, we know from God's Word, it's a lie. Amen. And so here in verse 3, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sin every year. In those sacrifices, he's, he's saying in that sacrifice that the priest made, there is remembrances of it. And so that's the reason why that he has to go and make that atonement again with the blood. So now notice in verse 4, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Amen. So that should tell you this morning that anything, any kind of works that you do, any kind of anything that you do that is work for Ephesians says, for by grace are you saved, and that not of not of works. Amen. And so listen, anything that you are trying to do, if it's put money in the tithe box, or if it's a, if it's trying to stay trim and slim, or if it's trying to to go to church every Sunday and you're expecting that to, to keep you saved, listen. It's wrong. Amen. I'm, I'm just telling you. I'm not. I'm not saying, hey, uh, 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 that that uh, you're going to die and go to hell. But I'm saying this this morning to keep to keep saved. It's not of you. Amen. And that's Amen. the reason why this morning, when when God gets ready, and when Jesus Christ gets ready for one of His souls, one that He's chosen, Amen. one before the world was ever before the world ever was he made a choice amen he wrote it down and listen that soul will be saved right amen and this morning you can depend on it you can depend on it and you can depend on it because it's true and listen he don't make no mistakes he's always right and so we don't have to worry about the salvation because if we if if we have a heartfelt salvation if we know when we were saved if we have that that place that, and, and all that listen it's salvation and it, it's it's the simplest thing in the world because listen you get it free it don't cost you a thing in this world and it never will cost you nothing Amen. But now God expects you to live in a way that is, that is pleasing to Him. But to listen, that shouldn't be no cost to you because your soul is saved, and you know one day that that soul is going to die, and uh, your body's going to die. It's going to go up there and be with the Lord, and later on your body's going to be resurrected, your glorified body. And they're going to meet in the air and go to be with the Lord. So shall you ever be. And so it shouldn't be any problems. But the world, the flesh. The flesh, it, it is the thing that torments the spirit. Right. And Paul said there's that constant warfare all the time between your flesh and the spirit. And listen, the only thing that I can tell you is that you, your flesh is not saved. Right. When you are saved, your soul is saved, your spirit is saved, but your flesh is just as sinful as it was the day it come forth out of its mother. Right. It's, 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 it's still a sin. And so don't expect, don't expect the flesh to walk around like a saint all the time and never have none of these old ungodly thoughts because it will. And the only thing you can say is, Lord, just forgive me. So here we go. So he says it's not possible for these, this blood of these animals uh, to take away sin. Now, I, I had a thing here I wanted to read to you in 1 Peter uh, 1, 8. Just a, just a minute, let me read this for you. 1 Peter in, um, 1 and 18, verse 18. For as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver, and gold from your vain conversations received by traditions from your father, but with the precious blood of Christ, Amen. as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, 
who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you. Amen. Who by him do who by him do believe in God and raised him from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. So he, he's saying here, but and, and you, you don't get it with silver and gold. You don't get it with works, but it's by grace. And so again here in verse 5, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body, talking about the body of Jesus Christ, hast thou prepared me. So Jesus knew from the time that uh, the world was, that one day he would come to this world, that he would die on the cross of Calvary, that he would take all of that, the things that he did, the beatings, the and, and the and the, the his blood going out of his body. He would take all of those things. He knew that, and he says here that God has prepared a body. Amen. So he here uh, in verse. Uh, uh, Verse 6, in burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. He's talking about the law back then when they would, when they would bring a, 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 a lamb in or a bull or whatever, and they, the, they would kill it there and they would burn it. Now notice here, he said, in burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. God didn't have no pleasure. Jesus did, didn't have any pleasure in it. And it wasn't the thing that was, was to come. This was the shadow. This was just a shadow. This was not fit for uh, using it for a cross in the creek. The shadow, you couldn't walk on it. But listen, this is what he says here. In, uh, in burnt offering, verse 6, in burnt offering and sacrifice for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, this is Jesus Christ. I come in the volume Amen. of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. And so here Jesus Christ comes on the scene and he's to do the will of God the Father. And he says, and above, in verse 8, and above when he says sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not neither has pleasure therein which are offered by the law and so the law was not pleasing to god the law was not was not pleasing to jesus christ but it was a thing that would keep that nation that he had made from dying and going to hell and so as long as they kept that they would go over to abraham's bosom and they would Amen. stay there until Jesus Christ came to this world and died on the cross of Calvary and in Ephesians I believe it is 4 he says that he when he went into the lower parts of the earth and he led captivity captive he took all of those out because then they had heard that Jesus Christ was to come then they seen him mm -hmm. and they seen him and believed on him and they followed him out of that place. And it says then, in Isaiah, hell hath enlarged itself. Right. Abraham's bosom no longer is a place that uh, people go and rest until a time when somebody can pray them out. Abraham's bosom is, is gone. It's, it's destroyed. And hell has taken it over. And so that's, that is some of the doctrines that some of your false religions teach that they'll go to uh, uh, Abraham bosom or they'll go to this holding place until such time as, uh, as uh, someone can pray enough prayers for them to get them out. But listen, it's false. Amen. It's just as false as works is false. And so he said here uh, uh, in verse 8, uh, I mean in uh, verse 10, uh, by the which we are our sacrifice through the offering 
of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. So that's our sacrifice this morning, people. That's our sacrifice that Jesus Christ came to this world, hung on the cross, shed his blood. His blood was the atonement for our sins. He placed it on the mercy seat, and the mercy seat, and all of that is before him and God this morning, and his blood is covering our sins. Amen. And God cannot see nothing but Jesus Christ's blood. And he cannot deny it because he, he was perfect. And so this morning, you have a perfect go between Jesus Christ and God. He is our, he is the one that does the talking for us, uh, our mediator. And listen, he is perfect. And he's talking to God, the creator of all. And so listen. What have you got to lose? Amen. You've got it all, and all the world you have to do is say, Satan, behind me, because I don't want to serve you. And when he starts worrying you, listen, it may take a while, but he'll leave you. If you, if you, if, if you, if the, the Bible says he will flee from you. And so here, this again, and every priest, in verse 11, and every priest standing daily, ministering and offering off time, the same sacrifice which can never take away sin. Amen. But this man, Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Amen. From henceforth, expecting till his enemy be made his footstool. And if you want to look at Acts 2. 35, you'll read something there about his footstool, and it mentions his footstool for, in verse 14, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Right. Sanctified, set apart, that's what happened before the foundation of the world. Those that will be with God and Jesus in, in glory were sanctified. They were set apart. They were wrote down in the Lamb Book of Life. And they're there. And he says, Wherefore, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he has said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Amen. And so we have that promise this morning, people, that God has done these things for us. And why should we be discouraged? Well, the only thing that I can tell you is just watch the old body. Right. Just just be aware of it because it it stays it stays disgusted all the time with God. Because it's born in sin. And it will never it will never be any other way until it dies. Right. right. And, the, and the Bible says in the Luke's and sixth chapter of Romans are that the the wages of sin is death. <coughs> and so this body that we have has got to die and go to the ground before it can be glorified. And then the sin debt will be paid from this body. And we can go and unite. When, the, when Jesus comes and says, come up hither, and our bodies comes with, our, our spirit comes with him, and that grave opens up, and that soul, that body comes out, and he goes to be together with the with him. Then, and only then, will we be perfect. Right, right. But we, praise God, we will be perfect, and we will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, a new creature, a new and before him forever and we will enjoy the blessings of heaven through et or eternity. Amen. We will be there with him and we will enjoy these uh, these words. So this morning I hope that this will will help you a little bit when these down times come because you know Ephesians 5 6 says let no man deceive you. Mm -hmm. Then again in Matthew 24, I think of 24, let no man deceive you. And listen, this morning, you have a Father, and you have the Holy Spirit, and you have the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have the knowledge to pray and to ask of Him to help you. 
And when you get discouraged, when you get down, <coughs> go to him and, and, and ask him to help you with these things. Because if you're saved, you're his child. And if you're not, and he shows you that you're not, pray that you can be. Pray that he will save your soul. Because I, I'm sure that there's uh, there's thousands and thousands of people that has heard the wrong doctrines, the wrong teachings, the devil's teachings. Mm -hmm. They think that they've got something, and when they 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 stand before him, they they're going to hear, "Depart from me, you workers of iniquity." I never knew, and doesn't it say there that they will they will say, "Didn't we do this? And didn't we do that?" Yes, they will, mm -hmm. and they will go there with the thoughts of saying, "Hey." I'm going to heaven. But it will not happen that way. And so if we're depending on the Lord Jesus Christ and know within our hearts that we're saved, we're found. Amen. And uh, just continue uh, praying for one another. Continue studying your Bible. Continue praying. And continue studying your Bible. Continue praying. And listen, that's, that's, the, that's the medicine. That's the gasoline that will keep the old thing chugging. Thank you all so much for... Listen to me. Man.